setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And thank you for joining me on the WBT. This is Michael Lodge. Glad you're here. So today's topic, today's conversation, politics. Be right back. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll free at 888-681-1518. Or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. So, it's sunny here in beautiful South Carolina. I'll be heading back to Palm Beach in a couple of days. I thought I'd let it all this stuff passed by South Carolina before I started heading down to to Palm Beach. Didn't touch really where I'm at. It's kind of been a beautiful couple of days of blue skies and sunshine. So it was really mostly over on the coastal side where South Carolina, I think today and and tonight, they're getting hit with, um, uh, with rains. Over here we have blue skies, a little bit of clouds, not that much. I was reading something very interesting this morning. Because every morning I get up at 5 o'clock and I begin reading. And I saw this article about Ikea. Now I don't know if if you have ever shopped at Ikea, but you know it's several levels tall. And it's usually, the one level is about 300 was it 300,000 square foot or something like that? By the time you get done, it's like 700,000, 800,000 square foot that an Ikea stores. So it's huge. It's gigantic, right? You've gone through the mazes. You've walked through there. Well, over the weekend, I guess, 3,000 people were playing hide-and-go-seek in an Ikea store in Glasgow, Scotland. Now, where in the world did anybody come up with the idea that they can play hide-and-go-seek in a business? (laughs) But I must tell you that, listen, if you're going to play hide-and-go-seek, Ikea is probably the best place. You have so many places to hide. I guess that has been kind of a a trend. I guess in in, uh, 2005, Ikea banned the uh, playing of hide-and-go-seek in their stores. Because it disrupted it so much. But can you imagine having 3,000 people playing hide and go seek? Luckily the the police caught on and they stopped it. 3,000 people playing hide and go seek. Now can you imagine adults going out and say, Hey, what should we do today? Oh, let's go play hide and go seek in Ikea. <laughs> To me, it is amazing what people are still trying to do. They're trying to revert back to their childhood. And they do it. They go out there, go down all the aisles and bins of the Ikea store. And I tell you, you can get lost there very quickly. I often thought, gosh, if I, if I ever had a child and it was if that child was lost in Ikea, I don't think I'd ever be able to find them. <laughs> 3,000 people playing hide-and-go-seek. Well, I think that's pretty much what the politicians are doing, too. They're playing hide-and-go-seek. They haven't come out. The candidates who are running for president at the moment, on the Democratic side, because there's only one person at the moment on the Republican side, and we know what he stands for. But on the on the Democratic side, yesterday, they all went to a CNN uh, weather environmental 
uh, seminar, whatever it was called, where they all get together. Seven hours, they stood there and they talked and they yapped and they jammered about nothing. And it's just a political ploy where they think everything is wrong. And they think that the environment is going to destroy us all. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be the environment that destroys us. It's going to be mankind. With a, a, a finger on the button someplace that can shoot a rocket. That, or that can destroy our business and communication networks. Or data breaches. That is the enemy that we have to pay very close attention to. The weather changes. In some years it's really, really hot. Some years it's very, very cold. This is a earth that God designed very well to take on and control the environment of this world. And it's been doing that for centuries and centuries, ever since the world has begun. We have got to start listening to the words that these politicians are saying. Because it affects us. An individual who wants to discourage economic growth and wants to increase taxes and wants to increase the size of government that is the danger to this country. When this country was begun, people came over from Europe. It's trying to escape a king, trying to escape high taxation without representation, trying to escape government involved in every aspect that they did, trying to escape religious uh, persecutions, and a state that only had one church that you had to be a member of. So they wanted religious freedom. They wanted economic freedom. They wanted to be able to live their lives the way they felt best for them and their family. But we've gotten to the point now where government has become so huge that it's out of control. And it's not just the federal government. It goes down to the state level, it goes down to the county level, and it goes down to the city level. These governments have expanded tremendously. And if you look at places like Los Angeles, the government has expanded, the personnel has expanded, but the quality of service has gone bonkers. You've got people who own apartment buildings there that are getting hit with fines all the time because the homeless are taking garbage out of their out of their bins and spreading it all over. Well, who gets to pay for that? The apartment building. Even though a homeless individual came through and threw out everything. Or you've got so many different aspects of the Los Angeles city. On the day that I left Los Angeles in July, they came out with this announcement that they were having to replace all the carpeting inside the city hall because it was infested with fleas. And those fleas came from the rats from the homeless communities outside, outside the city hall. Because it's feces and there's garbage and, the, the, and no one's picking it up. No one's cleaning it. So it amazes me that we spend so much money on taxes, but we have very little done. So we see this in cities of Los Angeles. You know the three cities of people leaving the most? New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco. I'm, I'm sorry, not San Francisco, Chicago. San Francisco is up there also, but the three top cities. Because people can no longer stand the environment that the city officials have created within the communities of, of these cities. If you travel into Los Angeles, I saw Dr. Drew 
um, going into the uh, tent city that is in downtown Los Angeles. And he gave a very strict warning that said that Los Angeles is going to be hit with some type of plague because of all of the feces, all of the rats. There are more rats now than citizens living in the city of Los Angeles. That's how bad the situation has gotten in these cities. So we have to be very careful of the politician who says, yes, we're going to have to raise taxes. But the problem is is, is that the normal American doesn't get the benefits of those raising of taxes. They want to raise taxes because they want to pay off everybody's education. They want to give free medical to everyone in the United States. So they want to give away a lot of freebies that you and I as taxpayers are putting our money into. But yet we have cities of Los Angeles and San Francisco and Chicago have these huge homeless centers that are driving up health care costs because it's generating diseases within the city. If you remember what happened in London way, way back when they had these plagues that ravaged the cities, it was because it was unclean. It was unkept. They had rats. They had mice. They had all of the people urinating and, and pooping in the streets. Now we're gone back again in, in these cities. So I would suggest that before we start giving out free stuff, we had better start taking care of our communities that you and I are living in. There is a, a study out of the University of Chicago that says that in American children, there are 300, I mean, sorry, 700,000, 700,000 American children living homeless in our cities. But you hear no politician ever thinking or talking about them. You never hear it. So when you see people rushing to the borders and not rushing to our communities to take care of our homeless situation and our children that are homeless, the priorities are wrong. Because America comes first. Americans come first. You and I come first. Now I predict that the state of California will have big time financial problems. Because they want to give free health care to, to individuals who are here in the United States illegally. I think at some point in time, Californians are going to sit up and say, hey, you know what, we're losing a lot of people, and where are they going? They're going to states that are more business-friendly. They're going to states that are, are less taxed. In fact, some of them don't even have taxes. Arizona and, and uh, Texas are the, number, are the two hot spots that people are moving to. We have a country that has gone so far left that it's destroying our communities. And I hear no one demanding any changes in California. They get, you know, in California you have to work sometimes two and three jobs just to be able to pay for your rent every single month and your food and your gas because they're so expensive. At some point in time, the fatigue of financial stress because of the high cost of living, a high cost of taxes, fatigues people, makes them tired, makes them upset. So you see crime rates start going up. You see more homeless people moving in because politicians have told the police, hey, stand down, don't bother them. But they give no 
no consideration to the people who have been there and lived there for years, and now they have to be concerned about their health because there are diseases being spread because of poop lying on the street. I saw one with Dr. Drew. He interviewed this one pastor who works with the poor in downtown Los Angeles. And he got a cut on his foot. And one day he was out helping the, the, the homeless and he stepped in some, po- uh, in some poop. Well, the bacteria spread into his leg and he lost his leg. So if you don't think that there's a real problem, go down and, and talk to some of these people. They are individuals who have mental health issues. They are, they are hooked on drugs. Do they want help? Maybe not. But if they don't want help, then they should not be in the communities because they are not willing to give back to their communities. We need to be more aggressive in our fight to take back control of our streets and our cities and our communities. My heart goes out to the homeless. It really does. But they need to be in an environment where they can have or get the help or make the choice for help. Living in a tent or under boxes is not going to get them very close. But if they're in a community where there's services available to them, then great. But you can't have them living in the streets and spreading disease. My heart goes out to them, but they need some help. And no politician is even even touching them. Instead, they want to talk about the environment and, and global warming and free schools and free education and tuition and all this other stuff. But they fail to talk about or work on issues within our communities. Politicians is, I mean, politicians are dirty. A politician gets into office now not to do good for their communities. I have very little doubt in that. I have very little doubt in politicians who say they want to do something for their community, but once they get into office, they don't. They go the party line, Because that's their power base. They want more power. Not one single Democratic politician who's up on that stage debating ever brings up the 700,000 homeless children. They never do. Instead, it's about the 3,000 or less Mexican children or Hispanic children or immigrant children that are coming across the border illegally That's who they want to talk about because that fits their political agenda. But the 700,000 American children who are living on the street is not part of their American agenda. And sometimes I even wonder, do they really even care about the citizens of the United States because they never talk about it? I mean, they talk about giving you free education, but they never talk about the 700,000 children or the homeless that have mental illness problems, or have drug problems, they never talk about them. That's never in any of their speeches. Instead, they talk and they preach about hate against Trump, hate against Americans, calling American names, and the list goes on. So, politics... Is a dirty business. And yet we entrust these people, we entrust these people to, we vote them into office to do something for us, but yet nothing ever gets done. Power and greed of a politician is so high that they forget about the constituents that they're supposed to be representing. I love this nation. This is a great nation. We have, you and I, 
we can sit here and we can dream and we can plan and we can think about starting a business or, or, or finding a new job or improving our lives or buying a new house or going to school and getting further education or writing a book. We have so many opportunities that other nations do not have. But we Americans, we have a great amount of opportunity. However, it gets taken away from us by politicians. And we see this happening more and more. So, I believe in this nation with all my heart. And I believe in you, and I believe in myself, in making good common sense, common sense decisions. Common sense has got to go back into play when we start thinking about what needs to happen within our communities. People yell at the police, but no one ever sits down and talks with the police and see how they can how they can make it better. No, they want to get out there, and they want to fight, and they want to throw bricks, and they want to say, I hate you, and they want to do all this. I don't know if you saw the, the uh, demonstration that was up in, where, where was it at? Boston, in Boston, where the people were standing outside the city hall and also the police stations going, we hate you, we hate you, we hate you. We don't like you, we don't like you, we hate you. What good does that do for America when, when other Americans are standing there saying, I hate you? We have to be Americans of common sense. And we have got to do what is right for our communities. And I encourage every single one of you to get involved in your community. See what is missing. See what needs to be done. Get a group together and do it. I love the fact. I love the fact that in in Baltimore, a group of individuals saw how dirty the city was. So they all banded together. They came from other states and other cities. And they all met in Baltimore and they started removing all of the garbage, all of the rubble, all of the everything that was piling up there. That's how we have to get things done, is by doing it ourselves because politicians are about the power, but they're not about the power of getting things done for you and me. So we have got the got to start taking back our cities, taking back the streets of our communities. If you know of a child that is having tough times at school, sit down and tutor that kid. Sometimes these kids have parents that don't know how to read English. They don't know how to speak uh, English. They cannot help their children with their homework and their schoolwork because they don't know how to read English. If you really want to make a difference, adopt that child for a school season and tutor that child throughout the, throughout the school season. Simple thing to do. English, math, arithmetic. whatever it takes to help these kids when their parents can't help them. A very simple thing to tutor a child for one week, one time a week or twice a week. That's all that they're asking for is a little bit of help. If you see a community center that needs volunteers, volunteer. If you see a police station that is being stressed out by the community, by the communities that they're serving, find out what's happening in that community and find out if you can't come up with a organizational plan that can help. Find a way to help in everything that you see there is lack of. Sometimes it doesn't even take money. All it takes is your time. My time. Think about it. Before you begin complaining about your community, about your police, 
bet you had better start thinking a little bit before you start doing something against or negative against your community. Find out what is needed in that community and get to work. And gosh, in the 2016 elections, I remember, if you looked at social media, it was a beehive of comments of how bad everything was. But no one ever said, how can I make it better? No one. No one ever reached out to the community and said, okay, listen, how can I help you? A church that has a volunteer program, maybe for after-school activities for kids, no one ever said, how can I make that better? How can I get involved more in these children's lives that live where I live? Volunteerism is the most important thing that every one of us have got to take into consideration. The economy is good at the moment. Jobs are being created. I think today I I saw that they added another 129,000 jobs to the market. So, the economy is good. What can we do to make our communities good? That's all there is to it. Can't trust the politicians because not one single one of those politicians have said to us in their speeches, you know what, I care about these 700,000 homeless kids. And I bet you that number has grown because it was done a year ago. 700,000 American kids living homeless and politicians don't care. We have gun shootings in the city of Chicago that rise in the killings and the murders that rise in the city of Chicago, but not one single politician has a plan for that city. Not one single person. Because it's not within their political agenda to help Americans. It's not. It's to gain power and to get more control over your life and my life. So if we don't start holding these politicians accountable, this nation is going to become nothing more than a political machine and the citizens will not be heard. And it's almost to that point, my friends. Politics, I hate talking about politics, but sometimes you, I've got to do it because I feel as though that we forget we get so busy within our lives and trying to run our businesses and trying to run our families and trying to do everything to survive in this world that we forget about that we have politicians that are disrupting our lives. And we need to hold them accountable for what they say and do. Because politicians is nothing more than a political, more than a corrupt political machine that wants to gain more and more power over this nation. I keep thinking about the phrase that John F. Kennedy said, don't ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I think we're at that point now. We're at the point where we as Americans have got to take back our country. Take back our states. Take back our school systems. Take back our federal system. And make these politicians accountable to us. And not to a political party. Now, I say that because I'm an independent And I turned independent four years ago. I became an independent because I saw that both sides, Republicans and Democrats, were no longer working together. They were no longer focused on the needs of the American people. Instead, they were more focused on the political power that they wanted to keep or to get. I think I've done enough ranting. Maybe it's time to go over to Ikea and play some (laughs) hide-and-go-seek. If you have any questions or comments and want to 
want to send them to me, you can text them to our office texting system, which is 818-252-5682. Once again, that's 818-252-5682. Everyone go out and have a good day. Be productive. Pray for those who are involved in that hurricane. Pray for them because they need it. And if you can help out the Bahamas in any way, find a charity that is is sending items to the Bahamas to take care of those people because many of those people have lost everything. So get involved. Again, everybody go out and have a great day. This is Mike Lodge, and I will talk to you very, very soon. God bless. Thank you for listening to The WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. This podcast is produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content.